Well, hello. My name is Erdan Eruch, and I am supposed to tell you about my 2026 Golden Globe race campaign. I am recording this on the good vessel Clara, about 580 nautical miles west of Cap Finisterre, and my departure point was Lorient. Now I, may, I am making a loop north of Azores and I will be heading to Lagos, Portimao area uh, in southern Portugal to haul out the boat for the winter. Let me tell you about myself a bit. My claim to fame is ocean rowing. I hold 18 Guinness World Records, including the first person to have completed a solo circumnavigation by human power and also the first person to have rowed the three major oceans. The last Guinness World Record that I registered was the first person to have rowed from North America to Asia between June 2021 and March 22 I rowed from Crescent City, California to Legazpi City in the Philippines by way of Hawaii and Guam. When I reached Legazpi, that was a historic first, but also the pandemic was still going on and China was closed, visas were not available, so my thoughts of continuing across to mainland and then bicycling <laughs> over to Portugal to continue, all those kinds of grand plans fell apart. During the rest of 22 and 23, as I was trying to sort out what next for me, I was coming across news of the Golden Globe race, the 22 race that was going on. I was one of those people who were obsessively clicking on the live tracking page, kicking up the clicks to 30 million for the 22 race. That's the kind of visibility that the race got. Don McIntyre and the team were doing a bang up job of promoting this on YouTube and other channels, social media. So I was intrigued. I had to look into this more. What attracted me was the retro aspect of this race and the conditions imposed on the skippers so that the mariner, the seamanship was brought to four and it was a, um, it was a pure challenge and stripping away all the modern conveniences like the GPS and the chart plotter and desalinator, uh, we were going to make more use of nature itself and pay more attention. And also solo unassisted non-stop aspect of this was attractive to me. In ocean rowing, the career total days of all the ocean rows that I have accomplished until today is 1084 and the nautical miles point to point great circle distances for all the ocean crossings that I have done is up to now 26,700 nautical miles. These are both a Guinness World Record. I'm leading the world in that right now. I hold a U.S. Coast Guard Master 100 gross ton near coastal captain's license with sailing and towing endorsements. I also hold an RYA Yacht Master Offshore license, which I will soon upgrade to Yacht Master Ocean. I'm a sailing instructor. I have done deliveries. I have done buoy races. So I feel comfortable on the water alone and I can take on the challenges that the ocean can throw at me and I felt that yeah I can take this on. The biggest question mark that I had as I was reading through the requirements 
was about the boat. What kind of a boat should I find? Where would I look for it if I found it? Being an old vessel, would it float? Would it, how, how much refit would it require? Could I do it where I found it? Would there be talent, materials? Uh, it just got to be this unending series of questions in my mind and I was stuck sort of stalling. And then in the end I decided, okay, the best way to get the answers will be to meet the race committee, meet the skippers, see the boats in one place. And where best to do that? Well, of course it was the award and closing ceremonies at La Sabla de Lone in June 2023. I made the trek there. I got to meet the fellow Turkish skipper Ertan Beşkardeş who made sure that I was an inclu I was included in all the events so I wasn't left out and I got to meet Kirsten and the race committee uh, shook hands with Don McIntyre who quickly held this little trophy next to me took a picture as as I would hold it eventually myself after in June 27th and uh, it was a welcome reception I got to meet Sir Robin Knox Johnston to talk with him a bit spend time what an inspiration it was to meet him an honor and uh, I also met Simon Kerwin Simon had brought Clara this vessel across the finish line ahead of everyone else this he accomplished after one stop at Puerto Montt in Chile to repair his broken wind vane and he lost 10 days in the process rounded Cape Horn in fourth place and still was able to bring the boat to across the finish line at Les Salvador alone in first place he placed first in Chichester class so he proved that Clara was a light fast nimble vessel provided one would be a skipper as good as Simon so if I become the skipper that Clara deserves then she will serve me well I talked to my wife Nancy and uh, we decided yeah we are going to commit and I shook hands with Simon and I said let's hand over Clara and the rest is history really <clears throat> it's been a matter of getting all the payments done and everything and then eventually I got to Lorient and uh, Simon was gracious and very helpful in getting Clara back on the water it had been sitting uh, idle for the longest time <clears throat> since the race and now I am sailing her uh, at, with most of the kit with me I have a vessel that I will be able to improve, upgrade if at all, uh, fix anything that remains. So it's it's a work in progress kind of uh, vessel for me. And I have the kit, I can look at the kit, I can see what's missing and I can uh, update those, replenish those, etc. So. I have a running start. I don't have to reinvent the wheel. <clears throat> that felt very good for me. And there was definitely great value in that. And of course, Simon was very accommodating in answering all questions and uh, making sure that I had a safe vessel uh, as I launched from Lorient. So on this sail, I left from Lorient. It took me about five days to leave the Bay of Biscay and then I sailed toward Azores and as I approached Azores of course the Azores High is very fickle, it's moving, there are a lot of dead zones, no winds. So I navigated to stay in the wind. The goal was to complete 2,000 miles 
of solo sailing requirement that I need for the race. So I'm a provisional entrant now. I need to accomplish all these qualifications before I am a proper entrant. I am now over 1,100 miles and I am starting the north turn clockwise back toward Cap Finisterre and then down the Portuguese coast to Lagos in southern Portugal. That's where the boat is going to be hauled out. I will leave the boat there, return to the boat in December, January, February, work on the boat, make sure that everything is as I would love it and have no issues going forward, leave little for the rest of the time before the race starts and probably launch from there in March toward the Canaries and then across the Atlantic to east coast of US, up the east coast and back to Lorient. Once I get back to Lorient, the boat will be there the winter of 25-26 and uh, probably early 26 we will pull the mast and with the mast off I will be able to demonstrate the jury rig setup have all the kit together hope that I will never use it but it needs to be demonstrated and practiced and set up then uh, once everything is ready and all T's are crossed and I's dotted according to the notice of race. Uh, I will then bring the boat to the Sable de Loan in probably May, June time frame. I just have to look at the calendar a bit and then make sure that I touch base with Don McIntyre before I make major moves like that. All the calendar will be followed then uh, you know the life raft service is going to be done uh, according to the calendar safety check so forth and I should be ready by 6th of September my job is to become the skipper that Clara deserves and that's been the process I have been following and I hope that I will be ready for the race fully committed all the STCW medical person in charge training so forth will be done this coming winter probably and yeah it's a it's a good nice challenge I, I was impressed with the notice of race how detailed it was and how descriptive it was and in any questions of course uh, Don and the team are ready to answer and also I got Simon and Arthan to turn to for advice and mentorship and I feel like I just joined the family all these people with common goals pursuing or having experienced this understand where I'm coming from and uh, when I visited at the Sabo de Long at the closing ceremonies I had the silliest questions probably but I was excited this wannabe <laughs> and uh, they probably saw in me what they were going through four years prior. So everybody was nice and kind and accommodating, inclusive. So I'm grateful. It's a great, great, great project. Uh, I will live up to it. I'm confident. I hope everybody's preparations are going well and you will all show up at the start line 6th of September 2026. We're going to have a great race.